Avi Maria and welcome to this edition of Booklog. Today we're going to have a look at this book here, For the Life of the World, and it's written by Father Jerzy Dumanski. And it's translated into English with notes by Father Peter Damien Fellner. Now, Father Dumanski was a confrere of St. Maximilian Kolbe in Nepokolanov in the 1930s. Uh, the book has a subtitle, St. Maximilian and the Eucharist. Now the translator says in the forewords to the book, the book's aim is to clarify and promote what is central to the spirituality of the Saint of the Immaculate, because it is so central to the love of the Immaculate herself, namely the love of him who is her son, present in the Eucharist. It is this love that should also be central in the spirituality of every disciple of Christ, especially of those who are his priests and vicars. Consecration to the Immaculate has no other goal but to bring the child of Mary, and therefore of God, to share with them the love of her son's love, who did die on the cross for love of our love, a mystery prolonged for us in the Eucharist. Now, Saint Maximilian Kolbe was ordained in Rome in 1918, and he celebrated his first Mass in the chapel of Santa Andrea della Frati. And this particular chapel was the chapel in which Alphonsus Ratisbon had a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the previous century. Now when we examine the Mass register kept by Saint Maximilian, we find that there are very few intentions, Mass intentions that were celebrated for himself or for his family. Most of the intentions were for the intentions of the Immaculate. So he had given all to the Immaculate, including his Mass intentions. There are many testimonies in the book to the great witness of St. Maximilian as a priest. So let's just read one of them. It was worth the effort to cross the river Neyman, where the Franciscan church was located, to hear the word of God from the mouth of this priest. There flowed from him a spiritual strength, that of love. One could sense his desire to help poor souls and carry them to God. He was an excellent confessor because he understood human misery and showed souls the way to the Mother of God, our mighty patroness and most loving Mother. A great number of penitents frequented his confessional, and at times it was necessary to wait considerably. But to wait patiently was worth it, because he filled the soul with a wealth of spiritual insight, often sufficient for a lifetime. Father Maximilian loved children, so often unruly and mischievous. He understood them, and hence they flocked to him en masse. He smiled, chatted cordially, and patted them on the head. He always encouraged them to love Our Lady, because she is our mother. Now the first building built at Nipokolan Friary by St. Maximilian was the chapel, and this was poorer than the Portsioncola of St. Francis but it was to serve as the heart of all spiritual activities in the, that immense friary. And the saint often went there to the chapel to adore our Lord Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament, and he encouraged the friars to do likewise. He called such visits audiences with the great king. And one of the friars recalls, When, for the first time in 1929, I visited Nepokolanov, I entered the, the original small, low chapel, Shortly after, Father Maximilian entered in a hurry. He did not notice that someone else was also present in the corner, and made adoration with such ardour, with such recollection, that this unusual sight made my whole body tremble. Saint Maximilian once wrote that Jesus, in the love of his divine heart, gives us as, his, gives us as mother his own mother, so that we might love him with her heart, no longer with our miserable heart, but with her Immaculate Heart. The love of the Immaculate is the most perfect love with which the creature can love his God. Father Dumanski writes that, In our Eucharistic devotion as well, we must love love with the heart of the Immaculate, if we wish our love to be as worthy and as pleasing as possible to Jesus. Then he quotes Saint Maximilian, who said that during Eucharistic adoration, we wish to love the Lord Jesus with the heart of the Immaculate, receiving him 
and thanking him with her acts. Thus, even if we should neither feel nor understand it, in fact we will honour the Lord Jesus with her heart, with her acts. Or to speak more exactly, it will be she who through us loves and praises Jesus. We are but his instruments. In his final imprisonment in Auschwitz concentration camp, St. Maximilian's final sacrifice was that of offering his own life to save that of, of, of a father of a family. When the camp commandant asked St. Maximilian who he was, St. Maximilian replied, I am a Catholic priest. His priestly character impelled him to conform himself evermore to Jesus Christ until he became priest victim. And as Cardinal Dofner attested, the final sacrifice of Father Maximilian had a character totally sacerdotal. So this little book is 150 pages long and it's a good introduction to the Eucharistic doctrine and devotion of St. Maximilian Mary Colby. And it's a very helpful chronological outline of his life at the beginning of the book. And it's a popular style and it's suitable for lay people and religious and priests. So let's close, thank you for listening and let's close with a prayer, with some words of advice from St. Maximilian that's quoted at the end of the book. Receive Jesus and accept everything from his hands with the same dispositions which the All Holy Virgin Mary had at the moment of the Annunciation. Behold, handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. <laughs>